by Jessica Mazur. This is Jack. He's very quiet. This is Jack's family. They are very noisy. In fact, they are so noisy that no one seems to hear Jack. Jack said to Ma, I'm going to the mountain today. Ma said, one or two pancakes. Jack said, one please. Ma gave him two. Jack said to Granny and Gramps, I'm gonna walk to the top of the mountain today. Granny said, I'm gonna knit you a nice new sweater. What color, red or blue? Jack said, blue please. Granny said, red is a very good choice. Gramps said, I'm gonna write a song about red. Jack said to Pa, I'm going to the very top of the mountain today. Pa said, are you going fishing in the creek? Jack said, no, I'm going to the mountain. Pa said, catch some big ones. Jack said to June Bug and Jim Bob, do you want to come to the top of the mountain? June Bug said to Jim Bob, Jack wants to play hide and seek. Jack said, no, I, I, I want to go to the mountain. Jim Bob said, count 50, Jack will hide. I wonder if anybody heard me say I'm going to the mountain, thought Jack. I hope someone did. He set off on his own with just his best friend Chester for company. Past the barn, across the pastures, and over the whooshing, burbling waterfall. Up, up, up the mountain side. Until he reached the top of the mountain. The mountain top was still and quiet. Jack took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and shouted with all his might, Can anybody hear me? Jack barely heard his voice fill the silence for a second before it disappeared into the vast sky around him. Jack sighed. I wish someone could hear me. Jack cuddled Chester and whispered, you can hear me, can't you? Yes, said Chester, looking straight at him. I've always heard you. Jack blinked with surprise, then smiled and said, Do you want to play? Chester smiled back and said, Yes. Together they slid down the snowy peak of the mountain and fell giggling into a heap of snow. At the bottom of the slope, they found a young wolf cub all alone. Do you think he's lost? Asked Jack. Yes, said Chester. We should call for his mother. Maybe if we howl together, she'll hear us. Jack was doubtful. No one ever seems to hear me. I can, said Chester. Give it a go. Oh, wow, 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 wow. So together they howled like wolves. Ow, 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 ow. Soon, over the hill, a much larger wolf bounded towards them. There, said Chester, I knew you could do it. Together they walked down the mountainside toward home. Suddenly, a bear appeared on the path, towering above them. Jack and Chester froze. Chester's voice quivered. If you look big and growl back, you can scare him away, he said. Jack's legs were shaking, but he took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and growled his biggest growl. The bear fled into the woods. Chester smiled. You were very fierce and loud, Jack smiled back. Thank you. Night fell. Chester, Jack said, I think we're lost. If you can call a mother wolf and scare away a bear, you can yell for help, said Chester. Jack picked up Chester. He took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and shouted out, Can anybody hear me? Only an owl hooted in response. 
I think I'm still not noisy enough for my family to hear me, said Jack. But then Jack saw lanterns bobbing in the distance. He heard the voices of Ma and Pa. Jack, where are you? Jack, can you hear us? Jack called over with all his might. I'm over here. I'm over here. The voices of his family drew closer. Jack smiled. They can hear me. Chester, just like you. Pa cried. We were so worried. No one knew where you were. Chester knew where I was, Jack said. Chester? Pa laughed. Come on, it's time for supper, said Ma. Chester winked at Jack. Back at the ranch, Jack's family all talked at once, asking where he'd been. Jack took a deep breath, filled his lungs, and with his biggest voice, he shouted, Quiet, please! His family became as quiet as mice. Then Jack began his story, and this time, they all heard every word.